Hello, everyone. Welcome to the information webinar for the Masters of Science program in Healthcare Delivery Leadership. I'm Brian Nickerson. I'm the Administrative Director for the program and Senior Faculty Member here in the Department of Health Evidence and Policy at the Icon School of Medicine, Mount Sinai. I'm joined today by Dr. Anatine Jelines, who is the Edmund A. Guggenheim Professor of Health Policy and Chair of the Department of Health Evidence and Policy which is the home uh, department for this program. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today, Anatine. Thank you, Brian. And thank you, everyone, uh, for um, coming on today. It's a great pleasure for me to be here and to introduce this novel and innovative program to you. Thank you. Um, today, we'll do a few things for you. We'll uh, first start by providing you a bit of an overview of the program, just so you get a sense of what the major contours are of the curriculum and what it entails. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the context of the program, why now, what are some of the reasons behind the creation of the program, and why Mount Sinai as a place to study uh, this material. Uh, and then we'll open up the uh, session to questions from you, from the audience, uh, to answer any questions you may have about the program, about the application process, or about anything that we speak about. Uh, if you're viewing this live, you'll see a chat box just below the video screen. You'll be able to enter your questions there, uh, and we'll be able to respond to you. Uh, since we have large participation today, if by any chance we don't get to any questions that you present to us, we'll be sure to follow up with you via email shortly after this broadcast. Uh, in addition to that, you can always email us or call us directly. We'd be happy to uh, answer a phone call or even set up uh, an individual one-on-one -on -one appointment uh, with you to discuss anything that we talk about today or any other questions that you have about the program. If you're watching this as a recorded session, we'd ask you to visit our website, which is available just below the video box. You'll see the link to our homepage. Um, it has all of our contact information on it. You can also uh, fill out the inquiry form if you haven't done so already. That would be the best way to keep abreast of any updates or changes or any information as it regards and relates to the program as a whole. Uh, and again, if you have specific questions, we'd be happy to follow up with you on an individual basis. So. Um, let's move our attention to uh, a bit of an overview of the program to give you a sense of what the Masters of Science in Healthcare Delivery Leadership is all about. And there's really, I think, uh, three things we want to talk about. And these are based upon some of the common questions we receive about the program um, and probably would, uh, I, I think, be on, on your minds today and one of the reasons why you're viewing this session. Uh, first and foremost, this is really a, a rigorous curriculum that's built on uh, basically three curriculum domains or three areas of subject matter that really comprise the entire program. The first area addresses and deals with what are the major drivers of healthcare reform and healthcare change today. And we really construct the first part of the curriculum around a very deep uh, discussion, probative discussion around the major economic drivers and the major policy and regulatory drivers of healthcare change today. And we start the program with those two topics uh, intentionally as a way for you to understand more deeply what's really driving change in an attempt to get a sense of what the future directions may be, but also to get a sense of what are some of the rationales and larger context behind policy reform and how one can position themselves and their organizations uh, to be ahead of that curve and also to respond both intelligently and effectively to what those changes may be. So the first part of the program actually deals with a, a, a course, a short course on the Affordable Care Act. Then there's a, a lengthier course on the politics of regulatory reform so you can understand the broader context of regulation. And we also have a course dedicated to economics so we can understand some of the major economic drivers uh, of change from both uh, shifts in payment systems to as well as what's going on in terms of the attributes of cost for healthcare delivery, what's driving cost, uh, and what are some of the possible changes that are occurring within that landscape. The second domain of the program then really moves on to both the strategic and managerial frameworks that are necessary to really effectively navigate and to successfully uh, compete and to be effective within this new uh, landscape of healthcare reform. So we go into great detail and we dedicate a course to each one of the following topics. We start with strategy creation. How do you create st strategy in this uh, changing landscape? Then we have a course on strategic communications. How do you communicate within this landscape, both to your stakeholders, but also in terms of the patient populations that you serve? 
We also then have courses on finance, and not to make you experts in accounting, but really to give you financial information to make better informed decisions about the implications of any strategic uh, decision or inflection point that you'd have within your organizations. We also spend time on a course on data leveraging uh, to understand how to use data to inform and drive decision making uh, within this landscape. And we also have a course on operations management to understand some of the important processes necessary to make healthcare organizations and healthcare systems more effective and efficient in the long run. The third domain of the program then moves into, as you'll see, we move from the larger to increasingly more precise and narrower topics. And the third and final part of the program then focuses on several things, uh, mostly the clinical microsystem innovations that are occurring in today's landscape. So where are the promises for greater levels of effectiveness, um, new models of quality improvement, of value creation and efficiency. And we spend several courses really examining what are some of the trends in these areas so you can become a more sophisticated uh, consumer and, and to understand that information in great detail for possible application to your home institution. Within that last area, we also spend a considerable amount of time explaining and understanding population and public health delivery as well. So one is fully versed in all of the models and all of the shifts in terms of the expectations on healthcare systems today. So these three domains really comprise the full features of the program. Um, the next question you may have and, and a frequent question we receive is, well, how is this program delivered? The program is delivered mostly in an online format, but we start the program with a one-week residency seminar where we meet here on campus at Sinai with all of the, your peers as well as most of the faculty and major presenters for the program. And we spend five days going over an orientation, learning a little bit about the digital management system, the learning management system we use for this program. We'll spend a full day in understanding all of the nuances and, and uh, trends within regulatory reform today. We'll spend several days also on personal leadership development, which is another hallmark of this program, spending time allowing you to develop your own skills and your, uh, your own sets of ideas and frameworks about what constitutes effective leadership. After that seminar is complete, we then move to the online portion of the program, and we start with a short course, a two-week course, on the Affordable Care Act, again, as a, as a way of framing out the rest of the curriculum. And then we move sequentially one course at a time for the rest of the topics of the course. You can find these topics listed in more detail on our website. But each course runs for a period of seven weeks uh, and is delivered online. In that online experience, you will have mostly asynchronous interaction, which basically means you can access the course material, the lectures, the presentations, the readings, and additional source material at a convenient time for you. Many people do this, working professionals do this early in the morning, lunch breaks, later in the day, or using some of the weekend hours as ways to do that. But again, that's delivered in a way where it's most convenient to you. You have 24 seven access to that material. Um, within each week, there are certain assignments that would be done that you would also do in an asynchronous time in terms of when it's convenient for you. But many courses also build in multiple collaborative features where you'll be working directly with your uh, peers on group projects or case studies within each individual course. So that leads to an opportunity for real-time synchronous sessions where you can use the digital learning platform uh, in real time to communicate and effectively work with your peers. And all of this technology is available in one place for you in one location. We'll teach you extensively on how to use that most effectively. You'll also have an opportunity to work in real time with the faculty through the digital platform, uh, where you'll be able to access them during live office hours, and also there'll be uh, work sessions that will be set up with the individual faculty member and presenters throughout each individual course. So it's a blend of both the best of convenience as well as an opportunity to work in real live time with both the faculty and your colleagues. Um, third feature of the program that's important and we get a lot of questions about, and I think which is a distinctive feature of this program, is the capstone project. Um, the capstone project is an applied project. It's something that you will define based on your home institution, a strategic and managerial question that you're either facing in your unit or your division, or a larger system-wide question that you would like to investigate and provide a potential solution to at your home institution. Um, you have the option to decide what that topic is. You will be given a mentor in the first semester of the program who will be an expert in the field that you've chosen or the topic that you define. And you'll work with that mentor through the entire 21 months to deliver at the end of this program 
really a solid solution to a major organizational issue that we are facing. So again, that's an applied project and a way to bring back the material in a very uh, real fashion uh, to try to solve problems in real time as you're facing um, uh, in, in the healthcare delivery system. Uh, and we'll work with you uh, hand in hand to make sure that that's the most effective experience. We start that capstone experience though as you walk in the door in terms of defining a potential topic within your first week of that residency session or seminar. Um, so th these are the general contours of the program itself, the, the, the general nature of the program and, and the essential thrust or major elements that we've put together for you. There are more nuances to that. We can certainly field any additional questions you have. But again, I'd urge you to check the website for, for additional information. What I'd like to be able to do next is since we have uh, Anatine with us, a, a, a policy expert, someone who is a uh, well-recognized leader here uh, at Mount Sinai and someone who's been involved in the origination of the concept which eventually became this program. Um, while we have it here, to provide some broader context, I think, around the program itself. So again, thank you for being with us. And thank you, Brian. Great to be here. So I, I think one of the questions that that people may have is, why is this program important now? Why is it more important perhaps now to consider a program like this in terms of Sinai's creation of it, but from someone who's potentially thinking about enrolling in the program, why does now make sense? So I think this is a critical time to uh, participate in this novel and innovative program. And the main reason is that the healthcare system, as Brian was just saying, is really undergoing substantial change. This is reflected, for example, in the introduction of new organizational constructs. We see the emergence of medical homes. We see the emergence of ACOs. We also see very rapid growth, probably independent of the Affordable Care Act, of integrated delivery systems that are really engines of change in current healthcare. And at the same time, the whole financial system is changing. We're moving away from fee-for-service reimbursement to new payment mechanisms based on defined episodes of care, based on capitation, and based on risk sharing. Now, all these changes have some very fundamental consequences for you as leaders. You have to transform your um, healthcare system and your healthcare organization in a so-called learning organization. And that means, I think, that you need to focus continuous improvement efforts in four areas. Providing sort of better disease prevention and health promotion for the populations that you serve. And this is relatively new. In the past, the incentives were really not there. And the ACA emphasizes disease prevention, and wellness promotion. Second, enhancing uh, the quality and safety of inpatient and outpatient care. Identifying what works well in everyday clinical practice by um, uh, conducting comparative effectiveness research and ensuring better continu continuity of care for the patients that you serve. Now, to succeed in this environment, providers have a strong incentive, as I said, to become learning uh, health systems. And um, we think that this program really is going to give you the tools and the knowledge to help make these types of uh, transformations. And so I think it's a fantastic program in this time of healthcare uh, disruptive innovation, if you want. Thank you, Anatine. That, that's wonderful. I, I think many of the things that you mentioned are actually touched upon in, in the program itself, uh, mm -hmm. particularly the comparative effectiveness research. I think one of the things that makes this program a bit unique is we spend a lot of time explaining to um, students in this program and, and developing the tools necessary to really understand how data is created, what's its best use. So you become a more sophisticated consumer of that information, but also how do you use it in the decision-making process is really a vital component to what we try to teach and infuse throughout right. the entire program. Uh, and I think that's obviously something important uh, to set apart and a, and a, and a skill to develop uh, that would help one's leadership uh, development and also help uh, just manage more effectively overall. Um, what would you say about the faculty in this program? I mean, what, what 
what kinds of faculty would a, would a student uh, enrolling in this program uh, experience? So I, I believe we have really renowned and, and leading faculty um, experts that are participating in this program. And what I think is unique is that they don't only understand the theoretical side of what they're doing or have made major scholarly contributions to particular disciplines, but these people are immersed in the healthcare system and deal with major management and strategic decisions on a daily basis. So you will be taught by the leader of the ACO at Mount Sinai, the chief medical officer, uh, people that are setting up new transition of care systems, and that really can start answering questions that you might have in your organization that, for example, explore under a new bundled payment system. Is it better for hospitals to keep patients longer in the hospital um, and, and not sort of discharge them to a more expensive nursing home or rehab facility? And if they keep them longer, can they discharge them to a home health care program? It's the people that really are shaping these novel delivery programs that will be teaching you and talking about what the big issues are to improve the effectiveness and cost effectiveness of care. So I think that's one of the reasons why the faculty here is so interesting and different than probably uh, a lot of other university programs. It's really the, the linkage between the academic side and the actual experience in managing a large healthcare system. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Dennis Charney, who's the dean of the Icon School of Medicine here, has a great saying. He says it's leaders teaching leaders. And what we've really tried to do in the assembly of the faculty is to make sure we have people who are on that front line of healthcare delivery innovation to talk about what's working, what experiments are out there, and perhaps what things are not working in terms of the, the landscape of healthcare experimentation today. Um, I think one also important point to pick up on uh, that's uh, very valuable to understand is that uh, Sinai is uniquely positioned to offer this program because we're, you know, within a medical school that sits within a system. We're not a separate entity. Uh, we're not a connected organization. We are the same organization. So we have access to the expertise and resources in a very unique way that are not disconnected, uh, as you find in, in many larger university programs that have departments that are not part of hospital systems. So, uh, that, and that was one of the, the catalysts behind the creation of this program and why we thought Sinai was uniquely positioned to offer this. So that access to expertise will be real. You'll feel that both in the individual instructors of the course, the guest presenters, but also in a potential choice of a mentor for that applied capstone project that you'll be required to do as part of the program we can access the, uh, the leaders within Sinai to actually be your mentors in that, in that project. Um, one final question before we move on to some questions from the audience and participants. Um, so as a leading policy expert, I have your expertise here. I want to be able to, to, to pick it a little bit. Um, in terms of the policy landscape that you see today, um, what else would you say to someone considering this program? Why it's important to equip yourself with some of the knowledge and tools in, in this policy landscape, what we're facing today? I think given the disruptive innovation that is upon us, it's very important to learn about innovative solutions that are evidence-based, that are empirically driven. And one of the huge strengths of this program is that it is a program that brings together leaders, clinicians, but also people in new fields like big data. How are you going to use big data in your organization, for example, to reduce um, the big problem of healthcare acquired infections? You need to know what the major infections are in your organization, what are effective management practices to avert them, and also what the costs are, where should we invest, what are the variations in care that we're providing, and how can we reduce complications and improve outcomes. And I believe that this program brings together a faculty that is multidisciplinary and 
has the background in all kinds of different disciplines to deal with the major healthcare uh, problems and issues that face healthcare leaders today. Excellent. Thank you, Anthony. Sure. So I know there's uh, several questions that are popping up, so uh, I'd encourage you to uh, enter your questions now if you haven't done so already, and we'll get to as many of them uh, as, as we can. And both Anatine and I will do our best to, uh, to respond to them. So one of the first questions that come, uh, come up is, can you describe the ideal candidate for this program? Uh, excellent question. Um, the, the program itself is oriented towards folks who have a little bit more experience, a little bit more longevity in a healthcare delivery system, uh, and who may be a little bit more senior. So one of the criteria that we tend to use for admission that we look at pretty carefully is whether or not the person has approximately seven years level of, of experience in a managerial role. So that's not total work experience, but at, at a managerial level where you would be involved in some of the typical managerial things, um, um, you know, planning, uh, budgeting, uh, human resource work, some of the work around some of the finances of a, of a given unit in addition to the, to the overall budgeting and planning elements. Uh, the typical things you would have to deal with in terms of the management of, uh, of a delivery system or a unit within a, within a delivery system. Uh, so those are one of the things that, that we look at carefully. Now, if someone doesn't have exactly seven years of experience or other managerial things that they've done intermittently throughout their career, we would look at that. We'd also look at motivation and other uh, educational backgrounds. So someone who's clearly articulated what they want to get out of this program, why they're involved in this program, why they want to do this program now. We weigh that quite heavily. Uh, and if we see someone who has a, you know, a good, strong trajectory of both managerial and uh, leadership positions, um, we would obviously consider them strongly whether or not they meet the seven-year threshold exactly. Um, so those are some of the things that we look at. Um, we do see quite a number of clinicians who have been part of the inquiry pool for this. We've received um, since our uh, announcement in this program in late April of 2014, we received hundreds of inquiries literally into this program. So many of them are clinician-based, so uh, MDs in particular who are uh, running or leading uh, major units are a frequent inquirer, but also some folks that um, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, for instance, are also a part of the inquiry pool. We also find many of the administrators and managers of units, the business managers, so to speak, of, of enterprises within healthcare system have inquired uh, and made application to the program as well. And again, we we look for that totality of experience. One very important consideration in this program is the peer-to-peer -peer learning element. The, the cohort model for this program really relies heavily on what each individual student in the program brings to the table in terms of knowledge and an ability to interact at an intelligent level with their colleagues. So we try to look carefully to make sure that there aren't wide disparities uh, in terms of the participants. So um, we have a program that, that is robust in terms of that all important knowledge transfer. Uh, many people will come to this program with m multiple years of experience in one or more of the topics, and that's a very healthy part of the program because you just have more resident-based knowledge that we can use. So again, it, it comes down to motivation, it comes down to years of experience, um, what you've done in, in other educational settings, uh, but also where are you clearly articulating your desire to go? You know, why do you want to lead um, in healthcare innovation today? So that's a very good question. Anything you'd like to add to that? Now? I, I think that's a great summary, uh, Brian. We, we are really gratified by the very wide interest that has been expressed in this program. And as Brian said, we hope that the first class in this program will basically capture a diversity of backgrounds, of experience, and of perspectives. So that when you come out of the program, you've got a network, not only of faculty members that you'll know very well, but also of your colleagues in the program that come from different areas and bring their unique perspectives to the uh, classroom uh, dialogue and to the discussions and to the small group experience. Absolutely. We're really excited about that aspect of the program. We really think it's unique and we'll do everything to foster that, that high level of interaction. Uh, there's another question, a few that have come in. Um, what are the advantages of the online learning platform? Um, 
we did extensive market research before we launched this program to understand what would be the best positioning for a program like this in the, in the market. What, in other words, what are people desiring the most? And it came back pretty resoundingly clear mm -hmm. that people wanted to do master's degree, but they needed the convenience and the flexibility to do it in a way that made sense in their very busy professional lives. So you know, highly engaged individuals want to do this, but how do they find the time? So we work very carefully in constructing the online platform in a way to maximize the convenience of the program uh, and the opportunity to learn while not diluting any content whatsoever and continuing to make this a rigorous, engaging program where you have the opportunity for multiple levels of engagement and interaction with the instructors um, and your peers in the program. So the, the, the features of the online platform are critical and they have both asynchronous features to allow you to, for instance, to access a recorded presentation by a leading expert in the field. So it may be talking about new payment systems under the Affordable Care Act. We'd find the best resident expert to deliver that in a presentation. You'd watch that presentation. You'd have PowerPoint slides. You'd have detailed materials, additional source material beyond that. Um, and then there may be a short assignment around that. And that those can all be done on your own time and presented and posted within the Blackboard system. In addition to that, however, we will have the opportunity to offer live interactive sessions through the platform with the instructors and with your peers, whether that's working on a specific project or working around a central theme or topic within the course that you want to know more about. And one of the things we'll do is we'll listen carefully to the types of things that you want to learn more about in the system and build within the platform those synchronous sessions as they make sense. So the, what we're trying to do is really in this blended learning design is try to capture the best features, the most convenient features of online learning uh, while also maintaining a level of rigor uh, in both the delivery of the content and in terms of what you're required to do to master that content throughout the program. So it is, you know, it's a program that deals with innovation and it's delivered in an innovative way in terms of these new online experiences. But uh, from an experienced educator, I've seen this work quite well for executive programs and we've done everything possible to make sure that those elements and features are as robust as they can be. Uh, we'll move on to another question. Um, should individuals in a senior leadership position uh, consider this program? Uh, absolutely. I think the essential design for this program was really uh, built around the notion that we would probably attract a significant number of senior leaders who've already accomplished things in their field, but want to do maybe one or two things. And this is a common uh, common response we're finding in the dialogue we're having with potential applicants in the program. Um, someone may be leading an existing unit or division within a hospital or a healthcare system and they desire to take a more centralized role, um, uh, a broader leadership role throughout the system. This program is designed in many ways in contemplation of someone who wants to move in a career direction uh, that way. Uh, in addition to that, there's also someone who may be within their unit that maybe not necessarily wants to take on a more centralized role, but they want to learn more about positioning their existing unit in this new regulatory reform environment and how to best do that. So the program is also designed in mind with understanding that that would be a major audience for this program as well, for folks that want to just make their divisions more effective, uh, more efficient in, in light of this new disruption. So that, that's really two primary audiences that, that we would look. So yes, senior leadership positions, uh, absolutely. Right. And again, you'll have very senior faculty who'll be working with you on a direct basis. Now, and over the last uh, few months, I've talked with a lot of, um, for example, clinicians who've started to lead divisions or became a chair of a department and said, we really want a program like this to learn about how to improve quality uh, in our system, in our unit, in our department, how to reduce cost, and uh, what are the new tools to manage um, sort of the, the quality and cost in a very rapidly changing environment. And I think this program will provide many of the tools and many of the discussions that will help leaders uh, to adapt and to succeed. Absolutely. So, um, the, you know, the, uh, 
audience for this, again, again, I think in terms of disciplinary diversity, um, in terms of positions that they currently hold, you know, we, we look at a, a broad range of factors in the determination um, of whether or not this program is a, is a good and strong fit. And we're happy to have that conversation on a one-on-one -on -one basis to make sure that uh, this is something that uh, fits for you. One thing about the constructs, so you keep, in, keep this in mind, the program is delivered in a little bit less than 21 months. So we've really done everything possible to accelerate the program in a recognition that, you know, as busy healthcare professionals, you need to move through the program and you, you want to get the most germane and essential information mm -hmm. delivered in a, you know, as quickly as you can and to work through the program in such a way. So we've designed that also in mind with recognition that, in fact, the time for completion is extremely important to healthcare, senior healthcare professionals, you know, desiring to continue their own professional and leadership development. Um, another question has come in. Can you describe the application process? Sure. Good, good question. A technical question, but nonetheless very important. Okay. You'll find right on our website, there is an application portal. will lead you directly into an electronic submission. So everything that you would do to submit for the application process is done electronically. Uh, you'll set up your own login. You can access that login platform 24-7 make changes to it, uh, do anything you need to do in terms of uploading material, et cetera. So we've tried to make this as fluid as possible for you uh, and as easy as possible in an online platform for you to uh, fill out that material. So the application process itself would ask some basic background information, talk a little bit about your current position, talk a little bit about your educational experience, um, what you've done both, uh, you know, in terms of your undergraduate, but if you have other graduate level degrees, and many of the applicants that we're seeing, you know, have other graduate level degrees as well, talk a little bit about those, list those. Um, we would need to eventually see official transcripts from all of the institutions where you've earned a degree uh, to be part of the process. Um, several have asked whether or not they need to see, you know, line by line breakdown interpretations of those. Uh, unless we have a specific question, there's no need to do that. So official transcript is all that we'll need. If you have a, just a copy of an unofficial one, you can upload that in the meantime to move the application process along. We'd encourage you to do that. And you could submit the official one at a later date. We're also asking for two letters of recommendation from uh, folks that uh, supervise your work in terms of the, you know, the, the, in terms of the reporting structure in your home institutions. Um, and who can attest to your leadership capabilities and your ability to handle a rigorous curriculum over the course of the next 21 months. Obviously a major commitment and a major endeavor. And we want to make sure that um, you've got the, the necessary endorsement uh, from those who know you well and from those who uh, currently supervise your work or have recently supervised it. So we'll need those two letters of recommendation and they can be uploaded in the system as well. Again, you could submit the application and have those letters come in at a later date. And then we'd also ask for a motivational statement. Again, why why this program? Why do you want to do it? What do you want to get out of it? And again, we want to make sure that your motivations are aligned with the intent of the program. And also give us a little bit of a cue in terms of where we need to calibrate the curriculum for you to make sure that you're meeting all of the inflection points that would be necessary for you to, for you to have the best learning experience that you possibly can in the program. So we'd encourage you to, to um, start that application process, submit it, um, and include the documentation or the formal documentation uh, as you can and as you can move along that process. If you have any questions or any problems, um, one of the things we recognize we need to uh, address each individual applicant on a one-on-one -on -one basis, which we've been doing. So we can work with you via email, on the phone, in person, um, whatever you need to help with uh, the supporting documentation as part of that application process. No, and I can vouch for the fact that Brian and the whole leadership of the program have been on the phone and in meetings with applicants over the last few months. So we are very willing to talk to you, to explore your interests, and to sort of define what you particularly could get out of the program. So please contact us in any way, if it's email, phone, or setting up a meeting, we're here to talk to you and tell you about what's good and what you can get out of uh, this new master's program. Absolutely. 
and the application process itself is a great way to get to know you as, as an individual and will also help shape uh, some of the elements of the curriculum mm -hmm. as we move forward. We're fully cognizant and recognizing that people are going to come in with certain expectations and some specific things they want to learn more about. So it's, it's a good point in the application process to start, uh, start that dialogue and start that discussion so we can, we can make sure we're, we're delivering a, a, an educational experience that's spot on to your expectations. Um, another question has come in, I think is a, is a good one. It's uh, please explain a little bit more about the week-long residency session and what they entail. So it's a very good question. So uh, basically, we, they're week-long, they're five days. They start on a Monday morning at 9 a.m. and we work till Friday, uh, till about 5 p.m. So each day runs from about 9 to 5. Um, the first residency session, we kick the program off uh, with a residency period. We think that's important for several reasons. One is you need to get to know your peers and to be able to socialize and create a network because you're going to be working through this material together as a cohort. So that face-to-face -face interaction with your peers is extremely important, as well as a face-to-face -face interaction with the faculty of the program, which you'll have an opportunity uh, interspersed throughout that week-long residency to meet the faculty. But we start on the first day with an orientation of the curriculum, and we also start with a discussion and training on the learning management system so you can get familiar and comfortable with that uh, immediate, with some immediacy. We then move into the second day of the seminar, really talking about all of the major um, elements of regulatory reform today, what the Affordable Care Act is really driving in terms of the healthcare delivery landscape. And we'll have multiple outside and inside experts, inside and outside experts to deliver panel presentations, keynote addresses, and conversations. We also have Sinai's utmost leadership uh, involved in the program as well. Dr. Ken Davis, who's the CEO of the system, is going to be available for a private lunch with the participants to talk about leadership, what it means to lead a major system today. And you'll also have an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one conversations with Dr. Dennis Charney, who's the dean of the medical school. Um, in a private setting to talk about leadership and what it really means today. And then you have multiple opportunities with other faculty and other leaders and experts throughout that period. We also spend two full days in the first full week on le personal leadership development. We have a leadership development expert that will come in and walk through many of the major things you need to be aware of to effectuate in a, uh, your particular leadership style uh, as it relates to some of the things that you want to do or that you're currently doing. So we spent two full days assessing your style, assessing some of the techniques of management, including conflict resolution, including negotiation, including bargaining, including some of the all important soft skills that are necessary to be able to navigate and work with people uh, in, in, a, in a newly uh, newly created systems or newly emerging uh, forces within the healthcare system. And then we'll spend several days, uh, the remaining two days of the program, looking at um, of that first week seminar looking at things such as quality improvement systems, broadly defined, what are they looking like? We'll look at population health management uh, and we'll spend a little bit of time really talking with internal experts as well as some outside folks in terms of what these new strategic frameworks that are emerging look like. So that'll be the first residency session and we'll also spend time defining your capstone project in that residency session. We find it incredibly important to make sure you have a well-defined project. So as you go through the course material, you've, you've got an opportunity to really pull in the material as it relates to your project. Most programs make a mistake and don't start the capstone project till the very end. We really start it up front and work with you on an incremental basis throughout the program. So that'll be the first seminar. The second residency seminar occurs 11 months into the program. It really bridges you between the second and third parts of the program those two domains we talked about. So as you're moving from the strategic and managerial topics into the clinical microsystems, we have a second seminar. That second seminar will talk in great detail about quality improvement tools, about what it is to be effective at a clinical level, to talk about healthcare innovations by actually viewing real cases as they relate to some of the innovations that are showing great promise. We'll also spend a considerable amount of time with you in that session refining and putting some of the uh, final touches on your capstone project as you move into the final part of that program. But again, it's, and it's designed really to talk more about the quality effectiveness frameworks that would be most important for effectuating positive change in your home institutions. So those are the two residency seminars. Everything else would be delivered in an online format to you, again, both in the synchronous and asynchronous fashion that we spoke about. 
And just to add to what uh, Brian is saying, I think it's pretty unique that the top leadership of the institution, uh, Dr. Charney and Dr. Davis, have been involved with this program from the very uh, beginning. They, they have been the strong advocates to create the program. We've been meeting with them all along, and they want to be involved in uh, the cohort and having discussions about what it means to be a leader in this changing environment. Absolutely. So it's an important hallmark of the, of the program. Um, another question has come in, um, how long in the program and how large is a typical cohort? Um, the program itself is literally 20 months and one week. We call it a 21-month program. Uh, that's the way we describe it. And again, starts with a one-week residency period, and then you move on to courses. The courses themselves run for seven weeks in length. You do one course at a time, sequentially. Uh, each course runs for a seven-week period, and that's a way to really immerse yourself in great depth into the program. Um, and to avoid any isolation material, that's why we overlay the capstone project and we infuse multiple presentations in each course on a variety of topics to make sure you have ample opportunity to connect the topics uh, across different disciplinary lines and different topics as you work, work, work through the material. So the program is and will start in the last week of August 2014. We'll start cohorts approximately that same time every year. Um, the size of the cohorts, uh, and initially we like to keep the cohort size small, so it would allow for intensive interaction with the instructors and with your colleagues. Uh, generally speaking, the cohorts will never get larger than 20. And in fact, for the first cohort, we probably expect a, uh, a fewer number than that uh, as a start to the program as part of the inaugural uh, cohort overall. But again, we were designing it as a way to make sure that um, there is ample opportunity for direct connection to the expertise that you'll have available to you uh, in each course. So it's important to understand that. And we keep that, those uh, sizes regulated based upon, the, based upon that need. Very good. Um, so another question that uh, has come in is, in terms of the start dates for the program, yes, uh, we, be, we like to begin in the end of August. We find that to be a convenient time for people to be able to take off of work as well as an opportunity uh, for folks to be able to immerse themselves in this week-long residency session. For those people that would be coming outside of the New York City metro area, we'd have ample opportunity to help you with logistics, um, to help you know any support in terms of lodging, accommodations, etc., as well as an opportunity to connect with the Sinai campus in a, in a very real and direct way throughout your entire time here. Um, so we, we spend, and the support staff and myself will be available to you to make sure that that is as robust an experience as you can possibly have during, during your time here. Um, for those of you outside of the New York City area, it's also a great way to experience New York City and to you know, provide yourself with ample opportunity to uh, immerse yourself in the city. Sinai, in many ways, is you know, part and parcel of the fabric of New York City, so uh, there's certainly a distinct flavor in that experience that will, will come out. So we're getting close to the uh, end of our time here uh, in terms of the, this session. And I'd like to thank everyone for submitting questions. If there's anything we didn't get to, um, I promise we'll follow up immediately via email and certainly contact us directly. Um, and we can, we can respond to you uh, as quickly as possible with any additional information that you need. So we realized today was a large audience. So if, if we didn't get to those questions, we can initiate the contact with you. Um, so, um, Anatine and I would like to thank you very much for your interest in this vital new program. We think it's timely, we think it's important, we think it's critical for the future of healthcare delivery overall. Is there anything you'd like to add as a closing remark? I, I think it's a fantastic program. Um, we are really looking forward to welcoming you to the program in the fall and working with you uh, over the next uh, months, uh, 21 months. Uh, and uh, any questions, please ask us, come by, email us, or call us. Thank you very much for your interest, and we hope to see you in August. And 
I'd like to just wish every success in your career. We recognize this is an extremely important decision, so we can hopefully be partners in that decision-making process with you. We wish you great success, continued success in what you're doing. It's all important to make sure healthcare delivery uh, remains as effective as it can. And we look forward to communicating with you. Thank you. Thank you.